Hello friends. In this video we're going to talk about using descriptive language to describe things better. So when you're speaking or when you're writing, a lot of the time we just say basic things. But what if we want to be more descriptive in how we're talking about something so that we can, as the picture shows here, paint a picture for somebody in their mind using our words. In this lesson, we're going to look at some different grammar that you can use to describe things in more detail. So if you're describing verbs, one thing that you can do is to use a synonym for the verb or a more specific word for the verb. For example, if I say I drink my coffee, drink is a very basic verb. If I want to be more descriptive, I can say I sip my coffee because sip is a synonym for drink, but it's more specific than drink because you can drink big gulps of something or you can take sips of it, which means you're just drinking a little bit at a time. So if I say I sip my coffee, I'm being more descriptive about the way that I'm drinking it. I could also use an adverb to describe the verb. So I can say I slowly drink my coffee or I drink my coffee slowly. So here slowly is describing the action of drinking. Like how am I drinking it? I'm drinking it slowly. Which basically means the same thing as I sip my coffee. So I slowly drink my coffee. I'm just using this adverb slowly to describe the verb drink. I could also use a prepositional phrase to describe the verb. In this case, the prepositional phrase would be working like an adverb. For example, I drink my coffee with contentment. So with contentment is a prepositional phrase. And it's describing the way that I am drinking my coffee, the way I'm doing the action. With contentment means that I'm happy, I'm peaceful about it. Contentment is being happy or peaceful or just okay with a situation. I could also use a participle phrase to describe the verb or the action. For example, enjoying the moment, I drink my coffee. So I've got this basic sentence, I drink my coffee. And what I'm doing is adding this participle phrase to describe the way that I'm drinking my coffee. How am I drinking my coffee? By enjoying the moment. Now this is called a participle phrase because it starts with a participle. So the participles, we've got basically the past participle, which is the ed form of a verb. If it's a regular verb, if it's an irregular verb, then the ending will be a little bit different. Or we can have what we call the present participle, which is the ing form of the verb. So we're basically just starting this phrase with here the ing form of the verb. So I am enjoying the moment. What I've done is I've taken this sentence, I am enjoying. Oops. The moment. So I'm taking this sentence, I am enjoying the moment, and this sentence, I drink my coffee. Now I could put them together and say, I drink my coffee and I am enjoying the moment. But to make it a little bit higher level and a little bit shorter, I can just take off this part of it and use enjoying the moment as a phrase to go with the sentence. So this is what we call a participle phrase. Or I can use an adverb clause to describe my verb or the action. For example, I drink my coffee as I breathe in the aroma. And the aroma is the smell. So aroma is a synonym for the smell, but it's usually a, it's a, it's a good smell. It's a pleasant smell. So I drink my coffee. I've got my basic main clause here. And I want to be more descriptive of the way that I'm drinking my coffee. So I say, as I breathe in the aroma. And this is what we call an adverb clause. 
It's an adverb clause because it's working like an adverb in describing my verb. So I've got a subject here, I, and a verb, breathe, and then the object in the aroma. And then I've got my conjunction here, my linking word, as, which is connecting it to the sentence here. So I can also take this as I breathe in the aroma and I can move it to the beginning of the sentence. So I can say, as I breathe in the aroma, I drink my coffee. Now listen to that. Listen to the sound of that. I drink my coffee. That's very basic. It doesn't give much detail. But if I say, as I breathe in the aroma, I drink my coffee. Doesn't that give you a, a better picture of what's going on? That as I'm taking a drink, I'm breathing in deeply and getting the smell of the coffee. Now let's look at describing nouns. We can do basically the same thing to describe nouns. First, we can use a synonym or a more specific word for the noun. So I can say I drink my coffee. Here, coffee is my noun. Or I can say I drink my mahogany blend. So mahogany blend is, it's a blend of coffee from caribou. It's one of my favorites. So rather than just saying coffee, I can say mahogany blend. And now you know what kind of coffee I'm drinking because there's lots of different kinds of coffee. And everybody's got the kind that they like if they like coffee. And if you don't like coffee, then I can't help you at all. You've got other problems in your life. So I can say I drink my mahogany blend as a synonym or a more specific version of coffee. I can also use an adjective to describe the noun. For example, I drink my fresh ground coffee. Coffee here being my noun, fresh ground being the adjective. It's a compound adjective. So fresh ground is describing the coffee, meaning that this isn't coffee that was ground weeks and weeks ago. I didn't buy it ground. I ground it probably right before I made the coffee, which makes the flavor much, much better. I can also use a prepositional phrase to describe the noun. So the prepositional phrase is also working like an adjective. So I smile at the coffee in front of me. In front of me is the prepositional phrase, which is describing the coffee. Which coffee am I talking about? I'm talking about the cup that is right in front of me. So when I say this, I smile at the coffee in front of me, you know where the coffee is. It's being more descriptive. It's not in my hand necessarily, but it is in front of me. Or I can use a participle phrase to describe the noun. For example, I see the coffee smiling back at me from my cup. So smiling back at me from my cup. This is the participle phrase. And again, the participle is the, in this case, the ing form of a verb. So it's a phrase that's starting with an ing verb. And in this case, it's describing the coffee. I see the coffee. What about the coffee? The coffee smiling back at me from my cup. So this participle phrase describing the coffee. And again, isn't that much more descriptive? Rather than saying, I see the coffee, I say, I see the coffee smiling back at me from my cup. So I smile at the coffee in front of me. I see the coffee smiling back at me. It's a happy meeting. Or we can use an adjective clause to describe the noun. The moment that I take the first sip is perfect. Here, that I take the first sip, this is an adjective clause. And it is describing the moment. So let's say I don't have that in here. The moment is perfect. Well, which moment? The moment that I take the first sip. So this is giving me more information about the moment, which is the noun here. So those are some of the things we can do to describe the verbs in the sentence and to describe the nouns in the sentence. Now, there's a couple of other things that we can do to be more descriptive in our language, and they focus on using imagery. For example, we can use what we call simile. Simile 
is a word or phrase that compares something to something else using the words like or as. For example, the first sip of coffee was like sunshine in my mouth. So I've got this word like. And I'm comparing the first sip of coffee with sunshine. Now think of that image when the sun hits you, how you feel. That's usually a good warm feeling, right? Now I'm comparing my first sip of coffee to that sunshine, but obviously the coffee is going in my mouth. Because I'm using this word like to compare the sip of coffee with sunshine, this is a simile. Or the first sip of coffee was warm as a perfect summer day. Here I'm using the word as. So you can see you can use like or as for the simile. So the first sip of coffee was, what was it like? It was warm as a perfect summer day. So I'm comparing the perfect summer day with the first sip of coffee. I'm saying this experience, the first sip of coffee, is like this experience, a perfect summer day. And I'm connecting them with this word as. That's what makes it simile. Now, another form of imagery like this is called metaphor. Metaphor and simile are very close to each other, except that with metaphor, we're not using the words like or as. So metaphor is talking about one thing like it is another thing because the two things are similar in some way. For example, the first sip of coffee was, we've got a linking verb here. What was it? It was a ray of sunshine in my morning. So I take that first sip of coffee and it's like a ray, a piece of the sunshine coming down on me. But you see, I don't have the word like or as here. So I'm comparing the sip of coffee to the sunshine in my morning. Now, obviously these aren't the same thing, but I'm saying that they're similar because they're both happy. They're both happy things. Or I can say the bubbling of the coffee maker was music to my ears as I woke from a deep sleep. So I'm comparing the bubbling of the coffee maker, you know, when it's making the coffee, to music. So I'm saying hearing that sound is like music. Even though it's not music, it's like music. But I'm not using the word like here. That's what makes it metaphor. So the bubbling of the coffee maker was a music to my ears as I woke from a deep sleep. And a third form of imagery that we can use is called personification. So personification, if you look at the word, we've got this root here, person. Personification is talking about something, something like it is a human being, like it's a person. So we're talking about a thing like it's a person, which means we're giving it human characteristics or human qualities or human actions. For example, the aroma of the coffee, and remember the aroma is the smell of it. So the aroma of the coffee called to me in the land of the dead. So aroma is a thing, it's a smell, right? But with the verb here, I'm using the verb called, it called to me. Now, the aroma can't speak, obviously, but I'm talking about the aroma like it's a, like it's a person calling to me. You know, when you're warm in your bed, you're asleep and you hear your husband or your wife or your mother calling to wake you up, wake up, wake up. I'm saying that the aroma, the smell of the coffee was doing that. Like the coffee was whispering, wake up, wake up. And then some other imagery here called to me in the land of the dead. So the land of the dead here just being imagery for sleeping, meaning that I was sleeping very hard or very heavily. Or another example of personification, as I held the cup close, I heard the coffee whisper, I love you. So here I'm using the verb whisper. Only a person can whisper, right? But I'm saying that the coffee, the coffee whispered. So I'm making the coffee be like a person saying, I love you, which is only something a person can say. So I'm talking about the coffee like it's a person. I'm talking about a thing 
like it's a person. That's personification. So those forms of imagery were simile, using like or as, metaphor, talking about one thing like it's another thing, or personification, talking about a thing like it's a person. And these are some very common ways that you can describe your writing much, much better. Thanks for watching.